pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Constitution is an interesting kind of thing. I'm on the side of those folks who believe it's a living document and it needs to constantly be reinterpreted in, in light of changes in, in society and things like that. Um, but it's interesting. I think one of the best things I ever read about that was from John Adams, who pointed out that one of the best things we have going for us is a great variety of different faiths because they all keep a close watch on one another, something the government you know, probably couldn't do as easily. Many different religions came here for freedom, and many of the states allowed for uh, certain religious freedom, like Maryland for Catholics, all right, and Pennsylvania was open to all religions. So that's one of the main reasons people did come here. So it's, it's extremely important they have it written into their constitution that religious freedom will be, will be uh, the only way to go, that everyone can practice their own religion as they, as they feel fit. Uh, in schools, it, you really have to look at kind of the, the two sides of folks that, that are in schools. One side is the students, the other side are those of us that, that are hired by a school. And in, in both cases, um, with students, they do have First Amendment rights, they, they, they can, you know, can, can express themselves. Um, students do have to be careful though that they're not pushing their views necessarily during certain times um, and, and proselytizing. As, um, as a school official, we can't do that. Uh, students have a little more freedom in that, and then they can express themselves. They can say, you know, if there's a discussion in class, I believe this, this is what I feel is right. Um, and, and I think for the most part, and I can, I can use my son as an example, my son came through the system, and uh, he always felt that he had the, the freedom to express his views, whether they were, you know, pro or con or an issue. And I can even remember a couple of instances where um, he spoke up and said, you know, I disagree with that or I agree with this point of view. And um, it was never quashed. It was never uh, ridiculed. Um, there may have been disagreements, uh, but I think for the most part we've allowed that, I guess it's that audience for our kids to kind of, you know, express themselves. There's been a, a, left, a definite lack of understanding of uh, multicultural groups and religious groups. I think of 9-11, uh, how 9-11 occurred, and we had have many students who are Sikh in our school and in this area. And I just remember how many of those uh, the Sikh uh, families were treated and how many comments were said toward them because they looked differently. When in reality, the, the Sikhs had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. Um, so what have religions uh, that's been an issue. I would say 9-11. After 9-11, after I remember uh, pretty vividly that I felt really sorry for someone who uh, was a Muslim and, and was a, you know, practicing Islam in a uh, peaceful manner. But a little more close to home would be the Amish community, which stands out in my mind. And, and because my, my wife has Amish relatives and grew up in Lancaster County, um, you know, I'm always aware of or have been aware of some of the prejudices against them and the challenges that they've had to maintain, again, their religious practices, beliefs in a setting that, uh, that tends to say, well, be like everybody else. And, um, and that's, been, that's been difficult uh, for them at times. And it's, it, it's, a unique, it's a unique example for us in our area, the Amish community, for sure. Hmm. Well, the history of this area is the Pennsylvania Dutch, okay? So historically, I believe people who were Pennsylvania Dutch settled up in the New York area, and they did so out of, uh, you know, for religious freedom. They wanted religious freedom. And then uh, those people came to this area, settled this area, and if you think about it, being Amish, is, that's a religion, okay? So um, the Amish are allowed to practice their own religion in the way they see fit and there's a very high degree of tolerance for, for Amish people around here. Um, but still, with the changing, evolving multiculturalism of our country, new religions are being introduced daily, and uh, I think we do wrestle with understanding those new religions and, and uh, respecting them.
But in our area, what I'm a little more aware of for Amish people is the whole idea of shunning. And I want to be really careful because I'm not an Amish professional. I mean, I'm not an right, Amish right. specialist. Um, but when, generally speaking, when someone who is in the Amish uh, community um, chooses to leave the Amish community, to no longer be Amish, if we can put it that way, um, those individuals are shunned. And uh, typically that means there's no contact or communication or support of any kind from family members or others in the Amish community. And so the question becomes, do the Amish have the right to, to practice shunning? Right. Does that match with our legal system? And would our legal system consider that, again, just uh, something unique to their religious expression? We'll let that go. Or does our, does our government, does our legal system define that as, for instance, a hate crime? Uh, you know, maybe there's been, not been any personal harm to the body, but there's emotional harm and there's potentially financial harm to saying you're no longer part of us and we don't welcome you, out you go. And is that by definition, could that by definition be a hate crime? And so now we have the, the blending of civil law with this unique, somewhat small minority religious group and, and those two worlds all of a sudden come together and it's, it's not black and white, it's, it's pretty, pretty complex. Uh. You know what, it, the, when I read the First Amendment, one of the first things that comes to mind is why is this even an amendment? Why wasn't this in, you know, included in the original document at this point? Uh, I think absolutely. And I think you know, the, the freedom of religion thing, I honestly think you know, those guys all came from countries which had established government, government religions. They saw, you know, in certain countries how Rome and, and the leadership of their own country were so closely tied together. You have England where you've created the Anglican Church and things like that. Uh, there's no question they wanted to make sure that government never established a particular religion. And uh, I think as the interpretation has come along through the years, you know, that's been really important. You know, I, I think it's important from a religious standpoint to maintain diversity, not seek unity. I think, I think generally speaking, I think there's clearly been a trend uh, in the last couple of decades where the expression of religion is being limited more and more. Um, and I, I would apply that specifically to, to Christianity. And of course, I am a Christian and I'm a pastor in a Christian church. Um, but uh, it's it's getting to a point again where the government is beginning to dictate what is appropriate expression and sometimes that seems to apply specifically to Christians no 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 prayers to God or mentioning of Jesus at graduation ceremonies or football games um, removing prayer from school those kinds of things and again those aren't aren't the types of things that I would say are are part and parcel to what uh, you know public education ought to involve, but I think, again, it, it represents government taking a step too far to define what is appropriate, rather than protecting the religious rights of people unless they're harmful to, the, to individuals or to society at large. You look at environmental kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You plant the same crop, one disease comes, you wipe out the whole crop. You plant many different kinds, one disease isn't going to wipe it out. I think there's strength and diversity and there always has been. We need to understand one another's faiths and respect them while you know, still holding to our own.